the body cam of the Tulsa police officers who were shot. I hope you guys saw that. If you guys didn't, just to give a recap, these police officers argued with the person that shot them or the guy that they pulled over and begged him to stop fighting, resisting to get out of the car during this time. The man was begging for his life, saying, please don't, screaming for help until he was finally able to reach underneath the seat of his car, shot both police police officers. One of them that fell backwards, you see on his body cam that the man who shot him turned around, starts walking towards him, and then shoots him again in the head. Going through the details of that case, one of the police officers actually did die from his, uh, from the gunshot wounds. This isn't an uncommon story, but with everything going on, I feel like I need to cover it because people are losing sight of what's going on. So right behind me, we have pro protesters demand cops let themselves be stabbed or shot by the New York Post. This actually came out on the 14th, but kind of in lines with the cops also being killed. The reason being is so many people believe that we need to abolish and get rid of police. Well, this one right here, it's crazy, but in a protest on Sunday's anti-cop riots in Lancaster, uh, officers may not defend themselves against lethal force if their attacker is a minority. And I'm just saying right now, this between what's going on, this, what police officer is gonna wanna do the job but even go away from the police officers wanting to do their job I think a lot of these people don't know a whole lot of what's going on they're too young I don't know what it is but the main point of this video is to bring some insight to some people police officers are a natural deterrent not even just being in the community it's a natural deterrent that if you do something wrong, a police officer, the cops may be called and show up. The same reason if there's a police officer living in the neighborhood, there's a l less chance of crime happening in that neighborhood. And it's usually, you know, even helps property value. And the reason this is important is because there's a lot of criminals out there that, well, we shouldn't say criminals. There's a lot of people out there that are not criminals because of law enforcement. I've always broken down criminals into some basic categories. You have, well, we'll just jump into examples. So we'll just say you have a car parked and you have a wallet sitting on the seat. You have one person that will walk by, check the door handles and the car's locked so they don't do anything. They just go about their day. You have another one that comes up, doors were left unlocked, will open the door, take the wallet, and go about their day. And then you have the final one, which is kind of what we see a lot of nowadays, or not see a lot of, but the ones that just make it happen, and that is the one that sees the wallet, busts the window, and takes it. They're going to get what they want. And a lot of criminals that you see now, that's what they do. If you think about if police went away, how many more criminals would come out because of the chance of consequences? So like this protest about cops should just accept their fate and let themselves be to be stabbed by a minority, really. If it's a minority commit committing a crime, the police can't do anything to stop it. Because if you're a police officer and you get called <laughs> on a minority committing a crime, or at least when you show up, it's like what I said in my other video. Nope, I'm not doing it. I can't do anything about it. So this person literally has the upper hand. If he decides to threaten me or anything like that, I'm not going home tonight. So I'm going to go about my business. This is going to increase crime in poverty stricken neighborhoods. This is going to make things so much worse because why would a police officer show up and even try to make a difference? Because people forget that it doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, or anything like that. Some people just are bad people. Some people are just evil. And if you give them the upper hand to say if you're a minority, the police can't do anything unless you're willing to stop and go with them. 
You can get away with anything you want. Crime's going to go up. Why do you think so many people in these protests or riots have been arrested and we find out that they have criminal records later on? Yeah, they want the police to go away. Look at what they like doing. They don't want consequences. So it's like, yeah, let's jump on this bandwagon. Let's abolish police. Let's tell police they're not allowed to do anything against minorities. And then at the end of the day, the people that are going to suffer are the people in the neighborhood that don't want to live like that anymore. Because criminals don't care about color. Criminals want to do what they're going to do. And we're already giving criminals a voice to stand on as long as they're dark enough to stand on it. To say, no, you have no right to do this. You are being racist. People need to stop pulling this racist card, but really, even we're not going to be able to get them to stop. So people need to start standing up against it. Ignore it. I'm like, we know we're not racist. This country isn't a racist country anymore, but they had to go out and find it. So if we keep doing this to police, we're not going to have any police left. And really, the only places that there are going to be police are these suburban neighborhoods that they keep bitching and complaining about saying that those are the issues. Look how they show that we don't need police there. If you start killing off police, crime's going to go up. Guaranteed. There's no deterrent. There's nothing like that. Go away from crime. Look at Colorado. There was people smoking weed illegally. And then after it passed, look how many more people started smoking weed just because it was legal and they wouldn't get in trouble. That simple deterrent makes a huge difference. And people fail to see that. I don't understand why. I don't know if these people come from neighborhoods or had a good upbringing or what. But how the hell do you think that makes sense? Someone got up, decided to help, and then they're told that they can't protect themselves against a minority? No. That's judging people based off the color of their skin. They should be held accountable for the crime that they're committing or what they're attempting to do. People need to start standing up because this is, once again, like I said, this is heading in a very scary direction. I'm going to leave it with, I don't know how many of you guys have studied World War II or Hitler. But one of the biggest questions that people always ask is, how did it go on for so long? Like, why didn't anyone stop it? My theory is because people fail to see it. What are the signs that are given? Because it was obvious it didn't just jump from one extreme to another. It started here. And then we see the extreme of where it ended. But what happened in between? Was there opportunities for people to see it and they just blew it off because their ability to imagine what could happen wasn't there and they just saw it as an impossibility? Just something to think about when we start seeing stories like this that wants to separate minorities. But also telling police that they can't do anything if it is a minority. Because they just think this is going to save the lives of minorities in general. This is going to save the lives of criminals and take the lives of the people trying to do good things. Like always, if you guys find value in this content, I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.